Because we need to sample the highest value that the EZ fields reach at each position in space, we need to assign EZ max values during the time stepping loop. So in the time stepping loop, we just need to make sure to assign EZ max values in the time stepping loop after all the EZs are updated in the grid. So I'm going to put here regular EZ updates. And we need to also, after we update the EZs along the axis of symmetry, so that we have all the EZs updated even at the source. So we have this way we can make sure to sample the EZs at the same moment in time everywhere in the grid. So they've all just been updated. So one way to do this is uh, to assign values to EZ max is to write a separate spatial loop or two loops because we have I and K that will cycle through all the I's and the K's of the EZs. So I'm going to write for K equals one to K max minus one, that has the same limits as the EZ up updates. Now for I, I'm going to start at one because for this we can include the axis of symmetry because we're not updating, we're just assigning values. And we have EZ values at I equal one. Now inside of here, I'm going to have an if statement. If EZ max at I comma K, so these are initialized to zero. So I'm going to say if EZ max is less than the absolute value of EZ at I K. So this means that once an EZ has a higher value than EZ max, then we are going to set EZ max to at I K equal to the absolute value because we're taking the magnitude of EZ at I K. And so every time of EZ gets a higher value, we'll put that higher value into EZ max until we don't get any more higher values. Now another thing we need to do here though is we need to add uh, a condition here. We also want to be, so this is continued on, we want this to be true, EZ max is less than absolute value of EZ, and also we want n to be greater than a certain number. We only want to sample the maximum E fields after steady state is achieved. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to say n max minus, uh, we could just do one period, but if we're right near a maximum somewhere, uh, right at the end of the simulation, it might be safer to just look over the last two periods of the wave. So two times period. So if this all is true, then we can do that assignment of EZ to EZ max. And now we can close our loops. Now in order to run this, we would have to define the period of the wave, which is the period is one over 10 kilohertz, which is 10 microseconds. But since we have to be careful about units here, because the way I've written it here, we're comparing two periods to n values, time step numbers and n max. So we need this 10 microseconds in units of time steps. So to do that, you can divide 10 microseconds by dt. I get about 72 time steps. So over the last 144 time steps of the simulation, we'll record the highest EZ value achieved at each grid cell of the model. Then we can plot the EZ max the same way we're plotting the EZ fields. So you can plot it on a log scale again. So we'll plot them on a, with a common scale with C axis and so forth. Log base 10 absolute value of EZ max. Try running your model and create a two dimensional plot of EZ max. For this simulation, Let's set IMAX to 750 and set NMAX equal to 2000 and run it with 100 cell PML.